Rick Salmon here. Thank you so much, so much for joining me for my class here at Photoshop World 2024. Have fun in Photoshop. As always, I hope you learn a lot and I hope you have a lot of fun because as Groucho Marx said, if you're not having fun, you're really doing something wrong. I created this image using generative fill and generative expand. So the idea here is that we can combine all these great tools and features, you know, to have more fun in Photoshop. I created this image from the image you see down in the bottom right. I took this in Botswana. Don't really like that the elephant is facing out of the frame. There's nothing going on in the trees. Kind of a boring shot. So I went into your generative fill and I, 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 I circled the area around the elephant and I said elephant looking, looking right. I put a bird in there, two birds in there, and I put the lion in the tree. And then I used, again, combining the features using generative expand. So let's take a look. Let's take a quick look at generative expand. I took this picture in a in a palace in Venice during the during during Carnivale. This is an amazing thing, an amazing event. It happens at Valentine's Day every year in Venice. Uh, these women and guys, all these people get get together. They dress up in these costumes. It's really a lot of fun. Well, here's the original shot, cropped just a little bit. I cropped this square for Instagram. I liked it. And then I wanted to see how much fun I could have using Generative Expand. So to use Generative Expand, at the top on the, on the uh, options bar, left is the uh, toolbar, top is the options bar, I typed in, a gener I, I selected Generative Expand. You can see the arrow there. And then I hit the crop tool, and then I pulled out on the anchor points to expand the canvas. And I left the prompt space blank because I just wanted Photoshop to fill it in. So after you do that, you just have to wait. And, so, and the bigger the file, by the way, the longer you have to wait. And this is the first image I created from my original, you see in the box there, I thought it was kind of cool. And this is a little wider image. So when you do this, all your variations are in properties on the right. And if your properties are not showing up on the right, just go to Windows and go down and select Properties, and then it'll, it'll, uh, you'll be able to see it there over on the right. And if you're not happy, try again. Try, try again. And the other thing is all these different versions are placed on a new layer. So you want to look at your properties, and you want to look at your layers. Okay. Let's take a look at generative fill. Hey, I know I'm talking fast. <laughs> I promised myself I would try to slow down, but there's so much here I want to jam into this hour. I, I just, I just, I can't help myself. So anyway, this is one of my favorite pictures taken out of the mes Mesquite Sand Dunes in Death Valley. I like the model, I like the lighting, I like the mood, the feeling, which is the most important thing in a photograph, by the way. When I was showing this at a seminar, and a live seminar, when we used to have live seminars, and someone said, well, I love the photograph, I love the gesture, the lighting on her face, you know, the props and everything, but the light sand dune, the light on the sand dune right behind her hat is a little distracting. And I actually agree. But this was taken about 10 years ago, and I had tried burning it and it looked kind of fake. So with generative fill, I selected that area, I selected the area, and again, with no prompt in the window, I click return. On the, left, on the top left, you see the before picture, and you see the after picture on the right. And that is less distracting now, so I was really happy with the result. But as I said before, you want to try again. You keep trying, 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 because you never know when it could be better. So once again, I circled that with the lasso tool, and now look what happened. This is really cool. Now it's really not distracting at all. It's nice and dark and actually added a little uh, flow to her hair. So this is really a cool. This is a great way to fix our mistakes or enhance our, enhance our pictures. So <clears throat> what's wrong with this picture? This is actually, I cropped this picture from my original picture, but this, this often happens, especially when people wear glasses. They don't look at the bottom of the frame. You can see her dress is cut off. So how did I fix this? Again, I'm using generative expand. I went to the crop tool, I pulled down, left that space on the bottom, didn't type anything in, and it filled it in perfectly. You would never be able to tell the difference. So again, <laughs> a great way to fix our mistakes. So your variations are just a review. Your variations are found in properties and they're always on a new layer. 
A couple of more examples of how cool this is. Now, if there's any National Geographic photographers watching this, they're going to say, hey, Rick's just having some fun here because you would never want to do this if you're going to submit a picture to National Geographic because for them, honesty is the best policy. And I agree with that. So anyway, this is our security guard in Papua New Guinea. We were up in the in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. And here's the original picture in the square. Look how magically, look how magically that area was filled in. I mean, how cool is this? This is the fun for me. I like this picture, took this in the Conway Valley in, in North Wales. This is a place called Fairy Glen. We were there early in the morning. It really uh, looks like a mystical place. But I was thinking, hey, you know, I would like a, a stretch picture for wall over my couch, for the wall over our couch. So what I did using generative expand again, just expand to the canvas and look at this. Now it does, it looks kind of like this in real life, but it doesn't look exactly like this in real life. So now we have this picture, you know, hanging over, hanging over our couch and it's fun. But again, National Geographic, you would not want to do this. And one more example. I'm sure you've seen a lot of pictures taken from the Dumbo Pier of Manhattan and uh, uh, of lower Manhattan there. Beautiful. If you go at night at the blue hour when lights are just starting to come on. I had so much fun creating this image. Now, the rocks are not, you know, don't look like that in reality. But, you know, what does an artist do? An artist creates their own reality. And John Lennon said, by the way, reality leaves a lot to the imagination. Reality does leave a lot to the imagination. So this is really cool, I think, that we can create our own reality. So you see my generative expand image on the top, my original on the uh, bottom left, which I still like, and then using the oil paint filter in Photoshop, I created a painterly look. We do, and when we take out all the detail and the sharpness, you know, we take out some of the reality. And when we take out some of the reality, our pictures can, but not always, look a little more creative and a, and a little more artistic. So have fun with that oil paint filter. Come join us at the Photoshop World Conference.